Let's look at some of the steps that need to be taken when diagnosing air conditioning systems. The compressor won't operate. Check the wiring and make sure the proper voltage is getting to the compressor coil. Without proper voltage, the coil will not have enough power to fully engage the clutch, causing it to slip and burn out. This may also create heat and ruin the front seal on the pump. If there's no power at the compressor, the machine's wiring harness will need to be inspected for any damage or breaks, and all corroded or bad connections will need to be cleaned or repaired. All components such as the blower motor switch, thermostatic switch, or pressure switches will need to be tested for proper operation. The first part to check is the blower motor switch. The blower motor switch should pass on voltage in all three positions, low, medium, and high, to the thermostatic switch. The thermostatic switch should pass on current when the switch is turned to a colder setting than what the capillary tube is sensing from the evaporator. Current will then pass through the high and low pressure switches as long as the pressure is not above the high pressure switch settings or below the low pressure switch settings. When everything is working together, the current will make its way to the compressor and engages the clutch. If the compressor still won't engage, the next step will be to check the fuse or the pressure switches. Some systems have inline fuses that are wired between the machine harness and the compressor coil. This fuse will need to be checked to see if it is blown. If the fuse is blown, it will need to be replaced. Check the compressor to see if it's working. If the current is getting all the way to the compressor coil and it won't engage, you will need to check the compressor for proper grounding. The coil will need to be tested for proper operation. If the coil is okay, check the clutch for any damage or for a gap that is too large between the plates preventing the coil from engaging. With all of these components checking out okay, the compressor should now engage. The inline fuse is blown. If the fuse was blown, it needs to be replaced. Once replaced and the compressor is running, the cause of the fuse blowing needs to be found. AC systems that have a fuse are designed to blow when the compressor starts to pull a vacuum from being low on refrigerant to protect itself from locking up. When the compressor is engaged, watch the low pressure. It will start off at its equalized pressure, but as the compressor starts to pump, it will pull a vacuum when the system is low on refrigerant. On some Delco models with a fuse setup, it will have a low pressure sensor on the back of the compressor that will ground out the fuse causing it to blow and shut off the power to the compressor. Once the fuse is blown, the system will not run again until the fuse is replaced. Systems that do not have a fuse will have a low pressure switch. This switch will sense low pressure and cut off the power to the compressor. After the compressor shuts off, the pressures will equalize. The low pressure switch will sense that the pressure is up and will re-engage the compressor until it senses a vacuum again. It will then shut the compressor off again. This will continue to cycle until the proper amount of refrigerant is added to fill the system. If the system is low on refrigerant, check the system components for leaks. There are two ways to do so. Using a Freon detector. This style of detector actually draws in air and tries to detect the scent of refrigerant gas informing you where the leak might be. Another way to find the leak is by using the dye detection method. Dye can be injected into the system along with the refrigerant. It is best to do this at the time of original installation of components. This will help the dye to show up at the site of the leak when it occurs. The dye will only glow under a black light. This method works very effectively and is a fast way to find a leak. If there's a faulty line, a &I Products carries a wide variety of lines that can be found referencing the original equipment manufacturer's part numbers. Having the type of connection of the line is also very helpful since the system could have been altered at some point in time. With R12, one way to find out if the system is full is to look into the sight glass and look for bubbles. You can use this way to fill the system by watching the sight glass while filling. Keep adding R12 until the bubbles have disappeared. With R134A, this process doesn't work due to the different chemical compositions. R134A will appear to be foamy in the sight glass. The best way is to evacuate down the system with a reclaimer to remove all Freon and start from the beginning, adding the proper amount per manufacturer specifications. Low Pressure Diagnostics 
After checking for proper refrigerant levels, if the system is full but the gauges are showing a vacuum on the low side, a plugged expansion valve could also be a possible problem. If this is the case, the system needs to be evacuated and the expansion valve must be replaced with a new one. When doing this, the system will be opened and the receiver dryer will also need to be replaced. A&I has them categorized by machine model. However, a visual check of the size, style, and connector type can also be identified in our photo reference section. If you determine that your expansion valve is defective, we carry several styles. The block style looks like this one. All block style expansion valves appear to be the same, but are made with different port and thread sizes. The O-ring and flare style will look similar to one of these, but are available in different fitting sizes. This style expansion valve is built with a variety of capillary tube styles. High pressure diagnostics. Let's take a look at the high pressure gauge to determine if there's a problem. High side pressure in normal conditions will be around 150 PSI. Depending on the ambient temperature, this can range from 100 to 250 PSI. The higher the ambient temperature, the higher the pressure gauge will read. If the gauge is reading higher than normal pressures, the first thing to check is the condenser. When the temperature is excessively high, it means the condenser is not being cooled down and will need to be checked out. The condenser must be cleaned and unrestricted from dirt to work properly. When the fan does not cool down the condenser, the temperature will steadily increase until the pressure switches shut the compressor off. On systems with a high pressure switch, the switch will cut off power to the compressor until the pressure comes down. After the pressure comes down, it will re-engage the compressor. On systems that don't have a high pressure switch, they will have a superheat switch that will blow when it reaches 430 PSI. This is located on the back side of the compressor. Once this switch is blown, it will need to be replaced. The condenser must have proper airflow to cool the refrigerant to bring the high pressure gas to a liquid state. If it is not cooled down properly, it will cause the whole system to heat up and may cause the compressor to fail prematurely. If you find your condenser or evaporator to be defective or damaged, A&I has new replacements. We have them categorized by model application in the A&I Air Conditioning Catalog.